at the point, at that time, you don't have the ability to see through that darkness. And you think that the easy way out is, um, is to leave it all behind, to just go, disappear. I think if we are going to adopt the right to be forgotten here in Canada, we certainly do have to, you know, limit it in some way. You don't understand until you live it. It's absolutely devastating to every aspect of your life. Think about just how much of our lives are online. I mean, what isn't there? And it's all going to be there forever. Makes you feel pretty exposed, doesn't it? Because what if you do something wrong? What if you make a mistake and that ends up there too? And it won't go away. So one of the big questions of our time is this. Should we have the right to have something about ourselves taken down from the internet? Should we have the right to be forgotten? Mount St. Vincent University in Halifax. In the fall of 2014, Michael Kidd was a professor here, and it was his dream job. I wanted to teach. I love motivating people. I love uh, um, giving them an outlet to share their ideas. But Kidd crossed a line. I made a really bad decision by getting involved with a student, a 38-year-old student, in a consensual relationship. And uh, what that ended up doing was um, uh, it led me down a, a dark and dangerous path. Fueled in part by an explicit picture of Kid that ended up online, the story became national news. It was all over social media, too. I went out and bought a bunch of the thickest, blackest sheets that I could find. And I boarded up all of my windows, boarded everything up, not a ray of sunlight in there. Um, because I didn't want to see the outside world. I was scared. Kid's relationship with a student broke university policy, and Kid was fired. His career over. But he says when he really understood that the story was never going to go away was one night when his nine-year-old daughter was asking Siri questions on his phone. And all of a sudden she asked the question, who is Michael Kidd? And it was like something slapped me and said, get over there. I leapt off the couch, grabbed my phone from her, and said, OK, baby, let's, let's go to bed. I took her to bed and put her to sleep. And when I came back out, I sat down on the couch, and I looked at the phone. And everything was there for her to see, every story. And words that a nine-year-old shouldn't be exposed to. And it was at that point I realized that uh, that putting the past away was never going to happen because of the digital footprint. I just... Now, there's another reason Michael Kidd's digital footprint is so big. The woman he had the encounter with, Tara McPherson, accused him of sexual assault. The police investigated but didn't lay charges. Still, in the age of Me Too, the question needs to be asked. Some people will argue that even though Mrs. McPherson's allegations were never proven, that an allegation of sexual assault is enough for you not to be forgotten. What would you say to that person? Absolutely not true. No, absolutely not. Today, Michael Kidd wants his story removed from the internet. But should he have that right? I mean, it's a tough question that as a society we need to think about. Because if someone is allowed to be forgotten, that's basically erasing history. And are we prepared to do that? And shouldn't the other person involved in a particular story have a say as well? To this day, Tara McPherson disputes Kidd's version of events. She denies having anything to do with the illicit image ending up online and insists that she asked for it to be removed. McPherson has her own opinions about the right to be forgotten. I think that if one party to any scenario has the right to be forgotten, then all parties should be. It shouldn't be selective to this piece or this person. It's, it should be all or nothing. Um, I think the story that has been presented in the media and online should be forgotten. McPherson explains that the last few years have been hard. 
that fear when you meet people and they Google you just out of curiosity, um, that's always looming over my head. I have a lot of anxiety introducing myself to people. Um, my children were affected, so I have a hyper awareness of you know how this affects them. It just it doesn't stop with me or stop with him. It's it's so much bigger than that. Now, if the bar to be forgotten online was just about how much damage has been done to people's lives, then maybe this is a slam dunk. But there's a competing interest, the public's right to know. Alan Mendelson is an internet privacy lawyer in Montreal. When people call you and say, I want something removed from the internet, what do you say? I tell them first off the bat that as it stands now, the law in Canada, it's going to be very difficult to get something removed. When I look at the circumstances and I, I look at the person and they tell me their story, and I'm like, oh, I can't do anything. The simple answer as to why is that Canada doesn't have a right to be forgotten law. And Mendelssohn says there's a strong case for things to stay that way. So if you were to take an example, let's say Vladimir Putin wants all information about things that he has done in Crimea removed from the internet. Well, those are bad things that he did in the past. So if the law in Russia says that, well, there shouldn't be bad information about Vladimir Putin on the internet, well, I think we can agree here in the West that that would be problematic. Still, Mendelssohn gets all kinds of calls from people who are desperate for things to be taken down from the web. And those calls have changed his view of the internet. When I started this six or seven years ago, I, I would have said, well, everything should be on the internet, and we shouldn't censor the internet, and we shouldn't remove content from the internet unless it's truly illegal child pornography or things like that. But having heard these stories and seeing what it has done to real people, it's become much more difficult for me to have that opinion um, because I, I can see these actual real-world examples where you know, people's lives have been destroyed. Like Michael Kidd's. The sexual assault allegation will hang over his head forever. And maybe it should, maybe it shouldn't. Remember, the police investigated and no charges were laid. I personally think that fact should be removed from the internet. You can't claim something now if something has been disproven or at least did not rise to the legal definition of sexual assault, you know, by the authorities. So as a result, you know, I would certainly support their right to be forgotten in those circumstances. In Mendelssohn's opinion, Michael Kidd's case meets a kind of legal gut check. But with no right to be forgotten law in Canada, that doesn't mean much. So what options do you actually have? Well, you could go see someone like Matt Earle. Realistically? Earle is the founder and CEO of a company called Reputation.ca. What are you selling? What you're selling is an improvement in your online reputation. Basically, a lot of people are going to Google you. So we kind of get in there and manage the kinds of information that they'll come across when they do research on you. One of the things Reputation.ca does is they put positive material online about their clients. This is the search result when the client comes to see you? Yep. The idea is to push the bad links farther down in a search and make them harder to find. Michael Kidd actually contacted Reputation.ca for help, so I asked Matt Earl what he could do for him. Right, so what we're looking at here is the search results for Michael Kidd in Google.ca. And basically, what our software does is it provides a quote based on you clicking the negative ones you want to remove. This first one, obviously negative. We've got to click that. And immediately you'll see over here a quote. Right, to get rid of number one, $27,000. Yeah, and as you click more, you're actually going to add more cost, more time, more difficulty to suppressing those out of your top search results. So this is an incredible amount of work. Um, this is a very difficult, very complex case. We're looking at 14 months, $2,500 a month, $35,000 to change this search result. $35,000. So if you have money, it seems you have a better chance of hiding things you don't want on the internet. And that's not Michael Kidd. In the end, he couldn't afford reputation.ca. Instead, he's tried to keep a low profile and piece his life together by himself. Which, of course, brings me to the question maybe you're wondering as well. 
Why are you talking to us? Because I believe people have the right to make a mistake and live their lives. There's other people out there who are going through the same thing every single day, men and women. And uh, I think they have a right to be forgotten too. Today, Michael Kidd works at a call center. And Tara McPherson never got her degree from Mount St. Vincent. There's nothing worse as a mother than seeing your kids hurting because of something that you were attached to or involved in. I do believe that something needs to be done. Maybe you believe that Michael Kidd and Tara McPherson have the right to be forgotten. Maybe you don't. But whatever you think, if we can't get the internet to forget, then there are no second chances for anyone. Nick Purden, CBC News, Toronto. So just like Canada, the United States hasn't legislated a right to be forgotten. In the European Union, though, it's the law that search engines like Google must consider requests to remove search results. So, and if they reject it, the app applicant can go to court. Earlier this month, the court in the United Kingdom overruled Google on behalf of a businessman with a past criminal conviction and observers call that a landmark case, probably won't be the only one to watch. Right, and, and, and we should mention, I mean, CBC News does have a policy about removing online content because we do sometimes receive requests mm -hmm. to take certain stories down, and generally we do not comply. The policy on that reads, our published content is a matter of public record. Altering the record could undermine our credibility and the public's trust in our journalism. That being said, though, there are sometimes exceptions, for example, when there are legal issues or concerns for a person's safety.